Hello, and this lesson is the Changing of the Lands Native American lesson. Um, we have a couple different objectives here for this particular lesson. We would like the students to be able to interpret how different Native American myths have pre preserved symbols and uh, Native American culture, as well as name at least two of the Native American tribes that have been or are present in Wisconsin's history. Identify two of the ways that Native Americans um, show their respect for the environment. Uh, design a personal seal that represents themselves based on the different symbols, uh, the, the natural earth symbols that we provide, as well as demonstrate how Native Americans have used games to enhance their skills, uh, both mentally and physically. And some of the different materials you may need for this are a map of the different locations of the tribes. You'll need the various tribe names. We have them all separate out of these different slips for students to read. You also need a symbol chart, as well as the Oneida Nation seal, um, as well as crayons and paper. And you'll also need games. So we like to gather the students at the very beginning in a nice comfortable outdoor setting similar to this campfire ring near the survival strategies area. Once we're here we like to introduce the fact that there's many different types of stories. There's fairy tales, fables, just any different type of story that we have in our world. However, many Native American stories will fall under what is called a myth. And a myth, though maybe not entirely true, is something that is used to explain why or how something happens in nature or with the culture. And we have a number of different stories for you to use um, on some paper if you need them to be read, read off. But we have some on uh, maple syrup and why the sap is so thin. Also, why the, um, how the bat came to be. And a couple different other ones. If you do choose to talk about why maple syrup is so thin, we do have some beads that can represent how many buckets, how many gallons of sap from a maple tree is used to make one gallon of syrup, and also how much sap from a birch tree is used to make one gallon of syrup. And so it's a nice hands-on way to just see how much sap is used to make only one gallon of syrup. Also, while we're out here, we like to try and pass out some of the different Native American tribe names that are in Wisconsin. And so some of them have some pronunciations at the end, in case they're a little bit more difficult for students to read. But we like to have these go around and have them learn all 11 different names of the different Native American tribes here in Wisconsin. Once you bring the students back inside, you can bring out the Wisconsin map with the different locations of the Native American tribes that were discussed outside. Um, they can also see the different locations of the tribes that are in the band of Lake Superior Chippewa. Um, you still want to stress that though these tribes all have some similarities, they are all very different with different cultures, different languages, and myths. Um, each nation also will have their own seal. Uh, an example you can show them would be the President of the United States seal, just as one seal to show. We also have the Oneida Nation seal, and you can go through all of the different symbols that are on the seal and what they all mean. So once you do that, you can pass out some paper and crayons for the students to draw their own seals using some of the natural earth symbols we have here. Also, if they have anything else they want to draw that has very special meaning to them, they could also incorporate that. We have some examples of different student seals here, we have some of their drawings. And while they're working on these, you can tell some of the different unique stories of the 11 different tribes that they tell different stories of the sustainable forestry that the Menominee Nation is working on, as well as some of the rising from uh, there's a different uh, blurb on all of the different nations and what they're doing to keep close to the environment and respect it. And so while you're reading those, you can also stress how respectful of the environment they were 
the use of birch bark in canoes or baskets, as well as using all the parts of an animal that they may have hunted and used. During this lesson, students also have the opportunity to look at a deer hide. So they have the opportunity to feel it, look at it, see what the Native Americans may have used it for. We also have some examples of baskets, so two different types of baskets. They can use their critical thinking skills to see what they may have used each type for. We have some pictures of what the canoes may have looked like, what their wigwams may have looked like, and the different materials that they may have used, as well as some different things that they may have used as well. So there's a lot of different pictures that the students can look at. Also during this lesson, they have the opportunity to use a pestle and mortar to crush up. We have both rice and corn, so they get to use this and see just how hard it is to be able to crush up their food. So it's a lot harder, and nowadays you can just buy them that way at the store. All right, let's go on to the games. So there are a lot of different games that are included in this lesson. One of them is the roll and dice game, which features different rocks with one side is colored and the bowl is a turtle shell. So what they're going to do is they're going to sift this back and forth and see which rocks turn up. So I will do that. And I got four black rocks and two white rocks and then they look at the sheet and see the point values that they get for each turn. So they try to beat the other person that they're playing against. This other game is called the ball and triangle, and they have a piece of birch bark and an acorn. And what they're going to do is hold the birch bark, and they're going to try to get this acorn in the tiny hole, like so. And I got it. In. All right. There is also a similar game using bones and they have to try to get the bone into the hole as well, so they can try that out as well. The next game are the Whirl and Catch. There's a couple different variations that you can use with this game. So students will start with one stick on their hand and they'll turn it and throw it and try to catch it again. Well, like this. Um, the other variation is that they can throw it up in the air twirl around and then catch it. So for every time that they catch it, then they add another stick and do the same thing. The next game is corn husk wheel and corn hop dart game. So what you're going to want to do is hang this up somewhere. You can either do it in Anderson, where you'll most likely be teaching this lesson. Otherwise, if it's warm enough, you can hang it outside on a tree. And you use these corn husks that have the feathers on them. This is going to be hung up and you're going to throw it and the students can see how many times they can get it into the hole. Another option for a game for the students to do is called the stick game and you can use it with the smaller sticks. Um, so what the object is, is they have a bundle of sticks. They're going to split that bundle in half so that one hand has an odd number and one has an even number. But they're not going to let their partner know which hand is which. So behind their back, they're going to split them up. One hand's going to be odd, one is going to be even, and their partner is going to guess which hand is correct. And then they can show which hand has odd and which hand has even. In conclusion, have the students return to their seats for a discussion of what we have talked about during the lesson. So what we have learned about the Native Americans' culture, how we can infuse that into our lives today, as well as has this lesson dispelled any stereotypes that the students may have had about Native Americans prior to this lesson? It's very important that you go over what we have learned in the lesson, just as a wrap up so that they can revisit this knowledge and hopefully it will stick in their brains better in the future.